Hi, this is Marcus. Recently, Tom, me and a friend of the show, Sarah, went to see the degree show at Brighton here in the UK. As a change to the regular show, for this pod, we have recorded a review of some of our favourites. I have put full links and some images so you can check out the work on our site, modernartisrubbish.com. So, on with the show. Hello, and welcome to Modern Art is Rubbish. All right, Tom. Hi, Marcus. And you're right, Sarah. Hello. So, um, we went to a, a local show, uh, a Brighton University show, where we're all uh, from, and we picked a few works that we thought were quite interesting to talk about. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. There was there was loads of work. Yeah, there yeah. was loads. There was, I didn't get to see it all. Yeah, I spent like two or three hours walking around. It's I did. massive, isn't it? I went there four times. Yeah. yeah. I even went for a run and I ran around a little bit. Well, I didn't run because I don't run in universities. <laughs> it's dangerous. I didn't break any health and safety rules. So I ran in my mind. That could have been an art piece itself. What, uh, with, in relation to our fluxus? <laughs> Running around the art gallery trying to see everything. Yeah, in your uh, mind. In your mind. You yeah, for self and safety, I would simply not do that. I would have risk assessed that. I don't know how many artists there are every on each year, but there was it was in, it definitely in at least three figures. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It was really good. A really lot of good. art. Yeah, it was. And... There was a lot of uh, artists that were doing that were almost like crossover artists. So a lot of illustration yeah. students, for instance, they had a lot of fine art kind of ideas going through their work. So it just wasn't just straight illustration. Yeah. So. And and the sculpture bit, which was the top of the building, had some quite mad big pieces. I quite enjoyed that room. Yeah, yeah I like that, that room. There's there some interactive bits, weren't there? We could yeah. dress up and stuff. Dress up. Yeah, yeah. didn't you see that? There's like these weird gloves that people like human sized gloves that people were getting in. Yeah, it's like gloves, uh, suit. They were like the whole body, a whole body yeah. suit. They were like gloves. Where what were exhibition you? did you go to? <laughs> they were like giant human condoms. Weren't yeah, they, they were yeah. a bit, but with a few extra. Are you sure arm you holes actually went to university and you go somewhere on Brighton Seafront? <laughs> There was always oh, a beautiful space because there's a lot of natural light coming in the room. It was a lovely, yeah, lovely it room. Was, it was a good room, actually. Yeah. yeah, it was. I like the room. You can see the police station from that. Uh, you you wouldn't want to get in a human sized condom in a dark room, darkened room, <laughs> would you? <laughs> We're strangers. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, other, other darkened rooms are available. And <laughs> I wouldn't go in that one for the record. I don't know. I'm not going to edit that out either, am I? I promised myself. <laughs> that's, that's there for perpetuity, what I just said. Right. Okay, so um, I might as well, as I started with a bit of illustration, uh, I spoke to a couple of uh, people doing illustration art, and the first one I found was really interesting was someone called Sarah Hunter. And she does work that's very like David Shrigley. So she does like little, uh, how would you describe that? Little, little drawings, kind of line drawings. Bit doodly. Yeah, bit doodly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but do you know what? Her work is really, really tender and it's, it's funny. And uh, she does like little drawings with little words. So for instance, I'm looking at one, it's called, uh, it's a drawing of someone in front of a laptop. And she's written, sometimes I complain to online customer services, so I have someone to talk to, and it's about uh, living alone. And there's another one here where she's had a, uh, a drawn a text conversation with a cat. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I ring my cat anyway. I've Skyped. Do you <laughs> Skype your cat when you're away? Have you ever Skyped your cat? Oh, no, my cat doesn't do Skype text. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've t spoken to my cat down the phone, but I didn't get much response. Yeah, I do. I, I, I hang. If you hang in there with cats, you do eventually get a, uh, 
you know, you do get a response. The other, another one she's done here, which I like, is just her written in words. Uh, written in words. Like words <laughs> yeah. What a surprise. That's a novel idea. She writes with words. Yeah, wow. but as an artist. Yeah. It's, it's illustrating in words, maybe. Oh, yes, mm. yes, yes. Yeah. She's expect drawing. She, she, she's wrote, I hope you spill crisps in your bed so you have to sleep amongst the crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. I have eaten in bed. Have you ever eaten in bed? And yeah. I've had to go like that and sweep. Yeah, do before. a big sweep, definitely. My uh, little nieces stayed over it and they were hungry, so I gave them crackers and there was cracker crumbs in my bed for days. <laughs> <laughs> for that, no, no, I only, I only meant for the evening. I didn't mean, no, I leave it. Generally, I'd change the sheets, but if that's what you want, that's, that's going to be recorded and I'll be on there. <laughs> So really good. So, yeah, so that's Sarah Hunter. The other one I looked at was, uh, did you see the one by Maya Doyle? Now, what she does is she does these really interesting, they're kind of graphic-y, novel uh, line drawings, uh, and some are in colour and some are in black and white, and they're very what I would call zen. They're almost like, when you look at them, you think lots of things are happening, and it's just, but really, it's just about the actual moment. It's just about being in the now. Yeah. So it, you've got, I'm looking at one and it's like someone who's just looking at a plant pot and they're putting their plant in, you know, and they've been, clearly they're working in the greenhouse. And it's a really simple, simple thing, but it looks like there's so much going on. Yeah. She does, the colour ones aren't really line drawing. Are those prints? Is it prints or online? I don't know how they were done, I think. I mean, on computers. Yeah. They're yeah. nice, they're bright colours. Yeah, but again, it's like someone in, in water and they're just they're just being captured in the moment of just looking at a, a reed in the sea. I yeah. Think. And I really like that. I like the fact that they're so simple and yet they're so, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're capturing just that moment. And that's something that I think that very few artists, very few sort of graphic artists do. Yeah, I like it. I like it because it's a, a female subject. I think in all of the ones I've seen of hers. Um, but it's kind of captured a moment where she's busy in whatever she's doing and she looks kind of, she seems indifferent to, to the gaze. She's not performing. She's not particularly smiling. And some of them, they don't, she doesn't look very happy, but she's just kind of in her moment doing whatever. And I quite like that. Yeah, and I, I like all the uh, the leaves and the flowers. It's quite psychedelic. Yeah. A bit like, I don't know who the artist was who did the Revolver album cover. Oh, the German guy. I don't know his name. Yeah. It's kind of something. I've just Yeah, and he up. did his, that was kind of black and white. We like the line drawings, because obviously yeah. our paintings are all like bright colours, but it's are quite... They um, are they paintings? Are they paintings? Yeah, I don't We're know. not sure what they are, but they yeah, are. I yeah, they're kind of flat colour. Yeah, so was she was she on display? Because I don't remember seeing her. What was one maybe I didn't get round to see hers in the exhibition? Yeah, I'm not sure I saw her. Yeah, I didn't see much of the illustration. Yeah, it's really yeah. good, really nice. Yeah, uh, one I'll just quickly mention, but which is actually more, I didn't really get to talk to her about her work, but it's more sort of illustrity. Illustrity, that's a new word. Just more, <laughs> just pure illustration, and that's Nikki Willis. And now I think her work looks quite, I don't know how to describe it as... It's kind of very unique, but very Parisian. Yeah, it kind and of, kind of um, old-fashioned etchings. It looks, yeah. yeah, it looks like. They're nice. Yeah, but they're just kind of more uh, just pure illustration. It, yeah, so, it, I like illustrity. That's good. It's like the Illuminati <laughs> illustration. <laughs> We've just invented a new word. Can I add that to my list? What was the other word I made? The illustrity. Scrungy. Oh, scrungy, yeah. Scrungy. <laughs> <laughs> You saw one at the. You were saying about the sculpture. Sculpture, you yeah. There was one you saw. Um, oh, yeah, there was one that was like um, something like Shrine to Mother. It was called, and it had uh, like lots of objects. And at the back, there was a picture of um, a mother and a child, or you, it looked like it could be, but they both had sheets over their heads, which um, tickled me oh, at the yeah. time. I found it quite funny. Yeah, they're kind of. Um... It looks like crushed velvet. They're like, so it's kind of, um, it's not plain, is it? And it was in a sh like a, sh a big shrine. So it was kind of celebrated. It wasn't just, they're not just covered up by like a plain sheet. Yeah. <laughs> they're quite like, uh, I don't know, glitzy sheets. Yeah, oh, glitzy, what, um, glitzy mother. What's the artist called on that? Irma Sri Partono. 
Yeah. So did you saw that one? Was yeah. There, what else was on the shrine? Cause it was, it was like, um. It was like a big corner of the room. Like you can imagine, Levy had a shrine to someone in your bedroom. That's what it would be like. Yeah, but it was it was kind of on an altar. There were, it was it did, it was altar, like yeah. a square shape, but it had sort of everyday objects. But I think again they were quite glitzy, like yeah, <laughs> they were like little funny shiny bits. Um, yeah, I really liked that one. It was aesthetically pleasing, and yeah, it was kind of funny. It had yeah, definitely had something about it. Yeah, there was another one up there that where the artist who was there when I went round. She had a video of her dad dancing, playing on a big screen. Now, you know, I found it hilarious because it was just like a dad wearing jeans doing dad dancing. <laughs> I didn't see that one. <laughs> yeah. Dad dancing? Yeah, I, 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 re- I don't know what sort of the meaning was behind it, but it was quite funny to watch him dancing in a room. And you went in the room and there was like nightclub music and like just um, a picture or a video screen. Of her dad dancing, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Do you know who the dad dancing person was? Was that in sculpture or is that in was that, there was there a video section? No, it was in the same room. It was as in the, the same room as the yeah. sculpture. We'll put a link on that. it. I'll find out who it was and then put a link on the yeah. to their work. So, really interesting as well was the, the 3D art. So, 3D art. Um, we saw that one uh, called Yarn by Yana Solfronk, uh, the Czech artist. Yeah. And that was Is that really, the ceramic? Yeah, really interesting kind of... I think they're almost like jugs, but they're really kind of spiky yeah. jugs. And they're done in a print which was uh, apparently an old kind of Czech... Oh. Design. It's really intricate. Pushed into the clay, is it pushed in? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, um, and they're arranged to form a, like a kind of spiky forest. And there was a lot of references to... But on the top, when you look down, did yeah. you see that? It makes arrows. Yes. That points. Yeah. I really liked that. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah. And, and they're kind of painted red. Yeah, yeah. They were really interesting. I like how it created this kind of forest. Um, there was a lot of references in her work to the situation in the Czech Republic at the time, but unfortunately, I unfortunately we haven't got a website to uh, to to say much more on to it. view like, the rest of her work or yeah, talk about it. Yeah. But no, I did really. Um, I didn't actually see it, but looking at the pictures of it, I really liked it. There's like a real artisan sort of quality to the in the detail of. Um, it's like flowers and geometric shapes um but then yeah an odd sort of an odd sort of shape kind of bridging that contemporary art artisan yes yeah thing and i really liked the because it is they is spiky and they look a bit hostile but i really liked the red arrows on top kind of all pointing kind of pointing upwards i felt that looked kind of positive Give you like a positive feel. Yeah, no, it's a good, good. Uh... Yeah, the patterns on it, she said, were from um, wall, like wall presses that they. It's yeah. Quite common. It's like old, old wallpaper that is recognised. Oh, like embossed, paper. like yeah. yeah. Yeah, but they were like sort of print things. I can't remember what she called them. She, she got. She had a roller. Tape. She had a dad's old roller. Oh, yeah. yeah. Check, check roller. All oh, right. Yeah. No, they're really, they're really good. Really this work. Good. Yeah. Um, Another interesting one, 3D guy, was called Samuel Roberts. And what he did was he took data from Facebook and from other places, I believe, and he create, he took the data and used it to make a sculptural form. So it's really interesting. It was, it was about making the, the data that is intangible, making it actually a physical thing. Yeah. I think a lot of people think that because they can't see this information that it doesn't exist yeah what sort of shapes then was it and what sort of forms it was just like an undulating shape and, and that would put, be likes uh, or whatever or i don't know exactly what data what, it was. What, what data he used to use certain data sets but it was it was really interesting because it yeah. purely was and it wasn't necessarily a beautiful form it wasn't an ugly form it was just a really interesting yeah it was form. interesting I, well I, I didn't see that one but i had a look at his instagram he hasn't got a website has yeah, he no. but on his instagram the the shapes yeah there's a kind of geometric quality to them but not but also not too regular yeah yeah, yeah absolutely but pleasing to look at yeah, definitely yeah. 
and not requiring cookie consent. Cookie consent? <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> we've, we've had a lot of stress with GDPR. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fortunate thing is just that's when you haven't got that many on your mailing list. It doesn't affect you that much. No, no, we've got loads of people on <laughs> Sign up now on... Yeah, uh... yeah, yeah just, just mail us some info at modernartisrubbish.com. Yeah, it's an interesting idea, using data and making it tangible. It, it would be interesting to talk to them because some of the artists were there while we were going around. Yeah. I guess there was one in every room. So it was kind of a bit of potluck who we met yeah. and that chatted to about their work, which it was really nice. Everyone we spoke to, you learned so much more about yeah. what they were doing and their practices. But that's the thing you get to, when you go to a lot of these university shows, you get to speak to artists that are such high quality. And, and they're there right next yeah, to their work yeah, and you can engage with them. Yeah, yeah. it's a good what, thing to go to degree shows. Yeah, that's the thing I like about it. Um, another one, Josh Cotton. Again, uh, he's he's really interesting. What he's done is he's created these kind of environmental works, where he took like a cast of a, a of of a I think it's some kind of cliff face, and it's a or or a, a rock formation that's being eroded, um, and he presented the kind of casts that he did as if they were artefacts that were being displayed in like the British Museum. Yeah. So it's quite an interesting way of pre presenting an environmental piece. Yeah, he he uses really unusual starting points. Like he hasn't got a website either, has he? But he's got no. an Instagram, which is just Josh Cotton. Oh no, Josh underscore Cotton underscore design. Um, and on that he's made like what looks like vases. But the starting point, again, looks like it's cast from nature. So it's an interesting thing to make a structure out of or to make a functional object yeah. out of. Um, but I want to talk about one of his ones I really liked, which oh, cool. was called... Um, it wasn't in the degree show, but it's called The Udder Table. Um, I'll show you a picture of it there. So it's four legs are made out of kind of a cow's udder shape. So it's concrete cast in, like, in a lycra mould with a steel skeleton. Yeah, I really like this. There's um, one of my favourite poems by Sylvia Plath called Morning Song. And there's a line in it, cow heavy with in Victorian nightgown. And I really like that poem. But it, this work reminds me of it. It's like the burden of milk bearing is quite a, it's quite a heavy burden. But also, like when you think of an udder, it's like hanging and that weight is hanging. And I think that's an interesting thing to make a leg out of. Like yeah. it's and put the burden on top then so the table has to be kind of weight bearing but I just thought that was a really interesting thing to make legs out of like I don't like describing work as playful but there is something yeah I guess playful in that yeah it's not often you, you see like a, a table made uh, out of cow udders no, no. <laughs> or like, not made out of them using um, those shapes yeah made out of the shapes yeah obviously <laughs> yeah. That's quite something horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I've just been a bit nasty again. I had my hand, I had my, yeah. Yeah, I had my hand turned blue when I was in a carrier bag and I was buying some milk and cereal. And that's about the best person as milk I got with. Uh. Yeah, so I mean, it would be quite interesting to make a table out of a carrier bag with weighed down with milk as the legs. Yeah. As an alternative. Call it the burden of milk carrying burden table. Burden of, yeah. Milk bearing, uh, yeah, I said. Burden of milk bearing, yeah. yeah. But I thought I thought um, it would be quite funny to have a table where like it just had one big milk other leg, <laughs> and then the rest of the table was around it. That's like a kind of seventies version of Josh Cotton's. Uh, <laughs> kind of more groovy. <laughs> what to have one leg? Yeah. Yeah, and the weight. Yeah, the weight perfectly balanced. Rotating cow chair. What's a rotating cow chair? Where did that come from? No, they, you do get them. I've seen them. Oh. Rotating cow chairs. Yeah, I've, I imagine one of those sixties round chairs with cowhide print. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. Yes, there are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a genius. I didn't even know that existed, and I've just created something on the cuff that's already been created. Mm. Oh dear. Yes, that's how I like that table. Yeah. It's like yeah. Did you see a picture yeah. of it? Did you see yeah, it? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. yeah. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah. It'll be quite. It'll be quite nice in your house. Yeah, that's what. Like he make. He's well. I don't know about that one you're talking about in the degree show, but um, the vase and that table functioning objects. I think yeah, it's interesting to go there with that sort of subject matter. Yeah, 
to create something functioning. That yeah. in itself is quite funny, I think. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's quite unique, isn't it? Yeah. Because others aren't particularly aesthetically pleasing, generally. Well, I don't know. How are you? Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you're a bull. I don't know what balls think. Probably... I, I don't think they're for balls, are they? What do you mean? Well, the ball isn't attracted to... Uh... How do you know what a ball's attracted to? <clears throat> well, I imagine it's attracted to the vagina of a cow. Well, wouldn't it might like the others? It might like... like... Mountain well, I'm really on a really dodgy ground here. It's like, it's like gone to me too for me now. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's good though. putting oh, cow, monthly, yeah. cow monthly, they have like others, isn't it? Well, maybe like, um, what's it called? The what of milk? The what of milk? What's the table called? Oh no, it's just called the, the other table. Path. The oh, the the, the um, that was. Cow heavy. She just is just a line in her poem. Cow, cow heavy. heavy in Victorian yeah. nightgown. Yeah. A cow heavy would would be quite a good name for a magazine. Cow magazine. <laughs> oh, cow heavy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, cow. Oh, I'm sadly too enthusiastic. <laughs> it's already got a subscriber. <laughs> yeah. Cow heavy. That's a new podcast, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Move the month. <laughs> Now we're talking about cow porno well, mags. Move, move of the month can be like a reader's letter, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank goodness you brought it down to just a nice friendly cow, level, yeah. cow magazine. <laughs> move, yeah. move. Any other things from the show? Oh, yeah. Um, I liked this one by Kathy Johnson called A Tale of Two Sisters. Um, and it was kind of like a book. Did you see it? Do you remember seeing this? No. And it had um, photographs in it, and it was telling the story of, um, so I guess, Kathy Johnson's great aunt who died when she was a little girl before her grandmother was born. And so this book was kind of like, almost like a diary, sort of bringing together old family photographs and little memories um, and little objects to kind of tell this narrative about how the effect of her great aunt dying had on the family and like still has now. Yeah. Um, but I just found it, I don't think I've seen anything like that telling a narrative. I mean, obviously it was a little bit reminiscent of Sophie Cow bringing sort of autobiographical bits together. But um, I liked it because it's the sort of thing you might see in, as like a novel or written as a, yeah, written as a book or a film. But that the act of doing that is like an act of reification and I think I've struggled with trying to watch biopics because I am get really hung up on, like, did they say that? Did they say those exact words? Or did they look that exact way? But so I found this quite an interesting way of telling a story, like a family history story, to have just these little visual bits and little memories. Like, it left it quite open, but you still got a kind wow. of sense... You got a sense of loss and you got a sense of... Um, sort of the the effects on the family and on her still, Kathy Johnson, um, even though this death happened right before she was born. Yeah, I really liked oh. that that format of it. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. So I didn't see that one, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good stuff. So, um, I think that wraps up our... Uh, Is our... that... Did you have any honourable mentions? Oh, yeah, honourable mention. More pure 3D, like traditional ceramics... And that was Anna Studley, and she made a uh, magic mushroom kind of uh, tea set, I think. Well, not a tea set, but I suppose it is a tea set, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. And she was talking about the medicinal value of it. I think there was something yeah. to do with that. But it was worth a nice, nicely created pieces. Isn't it Brighton Arts? Yeah. I don't know what it's called, Brighton, Art, Brighton yeah. University, isn't it? But I'm, I, it would be really nice to see more shows. I enjoyed it so much. Yeah. It would be good to see more shows in Brighton or in other cities. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it was really good. It was great to see everyone's work and really good work. Yeah, and, yeah. and a, a show that big is really immersive. And you can. Yeah. Mark, Mark has spent four days there. Yeah, and yeah I, I did. Wish I'd, I wish I'd done that. Yeah. Well, went there on four separate days. I did just spend. I must have spent about seven, eight hours. I reckon. Yeah. Which I do most years because you end up getting in conversation with people. So. For anyone who's listening now, uh, if you've got any artists uh, or art people, art people, what are art people? Well, 
you get to art <laughs> people are. If you know of anyone that you think is worth us sort of looking at or talking about, by all means, uh, please let us know. Also, if you've got any questions this on this future, this part of the podcast, uh, please send them in. So if you've got any questions you want, we'll be just sort of like asking, doing Q&As here on this section. And also we'll probably be interviewing other artists. Yeah, we could. So if anyone's got any artwork they want us to look at and we think it's a good fit for the show, then by all means, please send it in. So I think it's just left for the uh, buyers for this section. Oh, well, yeah. Well, thanks for inviting me to the show. I really enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, thanks for coming, Sarah, as thanks, well. Sarah. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, cool. All right, bye. 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 Bye.